Ladies and gentlemen, in just a moment, the family is going to enter the chapel. We'll ask everyone to rise and stand in place, and we'll be seated as one community. Before they come in, I do ask that everyone take a moment to be sure that your cell phones have been turned off or to the silent mode, including your watches. Thank you. Please rise. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time we're going to begin the funeral service of Samantha Nicole Wildemore. Cantor Amy Zussman will be officiating. We welcome those of you who are joining us online. Just as a last and gentle reminder, please be sure your phones have been turned off. Death has taken our beloved Samantha Nicole Wildebor. Our friends grieve in their darkened world, in their silence there is lamentation. In their tears there is loneliness, lost in their sorrow. May they find the presence of loving friends. Hear them, O God, and be with them. For Samantha's love that united us in love and in life, and which death cannot sever, for her companionship that we shared along life's path, and which continues through the tenderness of memory, for the gifts of her heart and her mind that brought us joy and happiness and is now a precious remembrance. For all these and more, we give our thanks to God. In this time of grief, we listen to the voice of our sacred scriptures that brings us the ever new message of God's nearness. It tells us of our kinship with the Creator, in light as in darkness, in joy as in sorrow, in life as in death. Adonai roi loech sar bino deshe yarbitzeni alme menuchot alme menuchot yinaleni Nahav she shove you shove Yan Heni Vimagle hit Sedek Yan Heni Vimagle Sedek Laman Shimo Gamki Lech Big hit some of it. Lo hirara ki atahi mahadi shivtecha umi shantecha hema yenachamuni taharuch lefanai lefanai. Shuchan neget sorirai, 
die Schanta war Schemeruschi, Kosiere war ja. Achtung, Wachesed, jede Funi, Koye Mechayai, Koye Mechayai, Vishavti, Beweid Adonai, Leorech, Yamim, Adonai Rohi, Lo Echzor, Adonai Rohi, Lo Echzor. The English translation to the 23rd Psalm can be found inside your funeral pamphlet. Please read along with me if you'd like. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Dr. Ann Litsky was director of education at Temple Jeremiah when Jennifer, Michael, and Samantha went through the religious school. Roz Wolf was one of Samantha's teachers and helped prepare her for her bat mitzvah. Both are here today. I'd like to invite Ann to come up and read a poem. <coughs> When I die, if you need to weep, cry for someone walking the street beside you. You can love me most by letting hands touch hands and souls touch souls. You can love me most by sharing your simchas, your good times, and multiplying your mitzvot, your acts of kindness. You can love me most by letting me live in your eyes, not on your mind. And when you say Kaddish for me, remember what our Torah teaches. Love does not die, people do. So when all that's left of me is love, give me away. In his sorrow, Job cried out, Adonai Natan v'adonai lakach yehishem Adonai mevarach. God has given, God has taken away. Blessed be the name of God. In ancient people, we are well acquainted with grief and with the valley of shadows. Death and sorrow are not strangers to us. Yet the centuries have taught us that a good name, a name like Samantha Wildebor, endures beyond the grave, and that there is strength in faith. With Job we say, Adonai Natan, God you have given. You gave us Samantha. She will not be forgotten. For all that was good and enduring in her life, we offer the deepest thanks of our hearts. Adonai Lakach, God you have taken away. We pray for the strength to turn our broken hearts into an altar of trust, before which we acknowledge your sovereignty and love. As we now say, Yehi Shem Adonai Mevarach, blessed be the name of God, now and forever. Let us take the next few moments to reflect on our memories 
of Samantha and pray silently. May the words of our mouths and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, be acceptable in your sight. God, our rock, our rock and our Redeemer, God, our rock and our Redeemer. Amen. It's said that words from the heart go directly to the heart. Who better to share memories of Samantha than her family? So I'd like to first invite her father, Bill, to come up and share a few words. It's really hard to summarize 28 years into a few moments. Lord knows I can't. But Sammy's dead. She did so many things to make me proud. Seeing her excel in school, seeing her improve in sports, engage in drama and theater. She fought cancer heroically. She made countless friends and friendships and relationships. And then she fell in love. But sadly, through the last 15 years, I never really saw her completely healthy. And many times it was excruciating. For her, for everyone who loved her. Sam always looked out for those who she loved. Even as a young girl, Sam would see someone sitting, or someone would be bullying, being bullied or sitting by themselves, and she would take corrective actions. Some of her closest friendships were cultivated through those occurrences. Sammy's path through life is filled with love. As a father, what more could you ask for for your children? I think the best way for me to summarize Sam is, in Scouts, no matter how beautiful a site was that we went to, it was always our objective to find a way to leave it better. I think that's Sam. <laughs> This is Jennifer, Sam's sister. Um, so I was the last person in our immediate family to find out about Sam's decision to go home on hospice. She did not even call me. I called her when I heard the news. She had told me that she was scared to tell me. She was scared of what I might say. 
As anyone could imagine, it was an extremely emotional conversation, and she must have said I'm sorry about a thousand times. I don't even remember much else from the conversation, except for being hysterical and trying not to react the way she had, she had expected me to, by arguing with her and yelling at her and attempting to change her mind. At the time, I did not have the words to say, but after reflecting, I am the one who should have been saying I'm sorry to her. Not only am I a nurse, but I'm your big sister, best friend, protector. I wanted so badly to fix your problems, <laughs> and I just could not. The hurt and guilt that came along with that came out as anger sometimes. I wanted to make all of your decisions for you because I thought I knew best, and I would get mad when you disagreed with me. <laughs> Don't treat me like one of your patients, he told me once. You were right. I am first and foremost your sister, and the truth of the matter is that I now realize that I did not know best. This is your body and your truth and your life, and the decisions should be 100% yours. I am grateful that at the end I was able to realize that when everything in my heart was screaming no, somehow I was able to support your decision because that is what you wanted from me. I can't even describe how I feel about our final days together, but I do know that it was such an honor to be by your side. You are so brave and so strong, a true Wonder Woman. And while I was brokenhearted, I will always cherish those memories and be so grateful for that time we had together. I flew from Pennsylvania to be there the moment you came home from the hospital. You asked me to spend the night with you and have a sissy sleepover in your bed, just like the good old days when we used to share a room growing up. We slipped right back into our old routines and tell us stories and laughing and staying up late. I held on to every single minute. I tried to make them last forever. I finally felt myself getting sleepy in the wee hours in the morning, and I told you to get some rest. You told me you only have so many minutes, and you didn't want to waste them sleeping. Um, I couldn't stop crying, and then you comforted me in, in your true fashion. Even though you were the younger one, you were always the wiser one. The one I went to for advice because you always gave the best advice. You always knew what to say to calm me down. And even though you were the one in hospice, you reassured me that everything would be okay. You reassured me that you would always be with me no matter what. At this very moment, I know that because of what you said to me, I'm able to stand up here today without being a gumbly puddle on the floor. You continue to give me strength every day. I love you so much, Sam. I love you more. And when I say I love you more, I don't mean that I love you more than you love me. Because I know how much you loved me. You proved it to me in everything that you did and everything that you said to me. You were always my number one fan and you told everyone. So no, I do not mean that I love you more than you love me because we loved each other tremendously. But I love you more than any bad day behind us or ahead of us. I love you more than anything life has thrown at us. I love you more than any argument between us. And I love you more than any distance between us. You are and always will be such a bright light in not only my life, but in everyone's life that was lucky enough to have met you. And her husband, Peter. I'm really sad that Samantha's gone, but I'm so happy she could pass away with myself and all the others who loved her. Her life wasn't always kind to her, but she filled it with such love and kindness to everyone. She touched so many people, and I'm really happy to have been a part of that. I admire her strength, her bravery, her courage, and her love. She was my best friend. I love her always, and I will miss her forever. To honor her memory, I'd like to present Samantha's eight rules for life. First is rule number one. Rule number one for Samantha is to always have something to look forward to. Samantha was always a girl who would get really excited about things. I would love seeing her smile wide and her whole face light up when she'd be excited about even the simplest of things, like going out to Chili's. Samantha would plan events a little bit in the future, and it would get her through her hard times by thinking forward to an event that she'd be excited about. It's harder to be sad when you know something exciting is coming soon. 
Another thing Samantha was pretty great at was journaling. She'd occasionally write these journals and give some of them to me, and each page would be flawless. I'd have no idea how she'd write out a whole page in pretty purple ink and not have anything crossed out or messed up and not have any pages torn out or redone. That brings me to Samantha's rule number two, always write in erasable ink. <laughs> One time in high school, Samantha would be bullied by the same kid every day. It was brutal, and she told me all the stories about it. The kid was so mean to her. But somehow, Samantha was always nice to him. She'd ask him how his day was going. She'd compliment his backpack. She never let herself be bullied. One day, eventually after a few years, the bully asked Samantha why he was being so nice to her after he would bully him all the time. Samantha said that she imagined he had a hard life at home and that he probably was taking it out on her. The bully relented. That brings me to rule number three. Always take the time to get to know people. You never know what they're going through. Another thing you have to know about Samantha is that she loved to bake. She'd make cookies, brownies, cupcakes, you name it. Samantha loves sweets, and she loves sharing this joy with others. She had a specific rule for making brownies that she really wanted me to share with all of you, and it goes as follows. Rule number four, when making brownies from a mix, the clumpier you make it, the better. But Samantha didn't just like to bake. She also liked to cook, and she liked to invent things. We have so many Samantha inventions in our house. She was constantly coming up with new ways to do things. One thing she invented was something called Sam Spice, and it was a little spice in a mixer jar that could just spice up anything. We put it up on popcorn, vegetables, all sorts of things. She never told anyone the recipe, but she told me the recipe could be revealed after her death. So here it is. Rule number five, Sam Spice is equal parts sugar, salt, pepper, paprika, onion powder, and garlic powder. Try it and tell me what you think. But Samantha didn't just spice up food though, she spiced up life. Samantha loved life and she loved having fun. While she was very sick, she never let her sickness hold herself back from having a fun time. And we'd have fun doing even simple things, like going for a stroll, or going to Target, or going to the aquarium. And we'd have fun doing more outlandish things, like owning a carnival-grade cotton candy machine that Samantha insisted we buy. Um, too many people are afraid to have fun, worried about what other people will think. Too many people think they're too busy to have fun. Samantha never let any of that get in her way. So that's Samantha's rule number six. Don't be afraid to have fun. Samantha liked to do a lot of things. She was never alone. Samantha was a family girl, and while sometimes she'd have complicated relationships and sometimes she'd hold grudges, Samantha always loved her family. When we first met, she would gush on the phone about how perfect her big sister was, and she called her a goddess at least five times. She had so much love for all her family, and her family really loved her back. The way they came together for Samantha in her final moments looking after her literally 24-7, was a true sight to behold. You rarely ever get to see love like that firsthand, people banding together for their loved ones, but it exists all the time, and Samantha had the power to bring that out in everyone. So that's rule number seven. Always remember the power of family and love. Samantha loved love, and that brings me to Samantha's final rule, rule number eight. Rule number eight is, don't be afraid to love because you never know how much time you will have left. Well, I wish we had more time together. I'm endlessly grateful for the year Samantha and I did get. We knew from the beginning that Samantha was sick. We knew from the beginning that our relationship wouldn't be permanent. We always hugged each other and told each other that we loved each other every time we left the house, just in case something would happen. We really did love every day like it could be our last, because we never really knew if it would, until it was. So in closing, I'd like to honor Samantha's memory and Samantha's love. I'd like to ask you all to hu hug each other a little tighter today, because nothing in life is guaranteed to last forever. But I know Samantha would say that what really matters is not how long our time together will last, but how we treat each other in the moments we do have together. So please cherish that. La 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 she loved 
Hamilton. She loved it. She listened to it all the time, over and over. This past Sunday evening, Pam, Bill, Jen, Nick, Michael, Laura, Peter, Ben, and I sat around a small bonfire in Pam and Bill's backyard, and through tears and laughter, we reminisced and talked about Samantha. She wanted this memorial service to be a celebration of her life. She loved bonfires and had a special affinity for the slightly misshapen, often used fire pit that we were gathered around. And I learned, in addition to her many talents, Samantha was a master marshmallow roaster. <laughs> Samantha was a warm, compassionate, and vibrant woman who always went out of her way to help others. She was a people person. She had a smile that lit up a room and a hug that embraced a person with sincerity and care. She was a cuddle bug and would spread her arms wide, welcoming others, even from her hospice bed. From an early age, Samantha would walk through the neighborhood introduce herself to neighbors, people she didn't know, and then bring them home to meet her parents. She had a huge heart and found great joy in making new friends and gathering people together. From preschool on, Samantha reached out to the outsider. She went out of her way to be inclusive, striving to make sure that no one felt left out. She didn't tolerate bullying although she was sometimes the target because she reached out to those less popular kids. She had many gifts, including her ability to see the best in others. She wanted those surrounding her to feel special and important. She was an attentive listener, patient, always giving the message that she had time for you. Samantha was in touch with her full range of emotions. She spoke from the heart with that said, she was honest and would say what she truly felt. Admittedly, she was stubborn, and the best way to get her to agree to do something was to make her feel that it was her idea. She loved animals, all creatures, great and small. From her giant puppies, I mean, they were more like the size of ponies, especially Hurley, to her collection of invasive snails, which she collected when she was a child. Samantha loved music. She loved to sing. She loved to dance. She loved to perform. She was in many plays at the Northbrook Theater when she was younger. And as I said, she was a huge Hamilton fan, listening to that soundtrack over and over. And the music from Encanto and Chicago were close seconds. She made delicious latkes. They were perfect, and not just on Hanukkah, but year-round. She had great culinary skills, both cooking and baking. She and Pam would prepare for holidays in the kitchen together, making kugels, casseroles. And when Sam met Peter's family, she arrived with an armload full of homemade baked goods. She brought freshly baked treats to work, too, and there was a rampage as people tried them. She made cake pops, puppy chow, cookies, and even cotton candy. Samantha derived great joy taking care of others. Even towards the end when she was in hospice, she wanted to get out of bed and make coffee for her visitors. She was creative, inventive, resourceful, and as Peter said, there were some 20 Sam inventions in her home, including that Sam Spice. She was also a great storyteller. She and Jen shared a room for many years. When Jen was stressed about something and couldn't sleep, she'd wake up Samantha. Sam would tell Jen a story to calm her down. Jennifer would fall asleep, and then poor Samantha was up for the night. <laughs> she was fancy. She adored dressing up and putting on makeup. She loved to give makeup out to people in her family. She was so fancy that she'd get dressed up even to go to Chili's for a meal. She made her own lip balm and also gave that out as gifts. 
She loved giving gifts to others and would shop early for presents and then hide them for months. Samantha's favorite gift to receive was an experience like going to see a play with her mom or her sister. She met Peter online through a site called Coffee Meets Bagel. It was during the pandemic, and the first few months of their relationship was long distance. Peter had moved back to Cincinnati from Chicago to stay with his parents and brother. Samantha told Peter that she fell in love with him when, he wa when she watched him dance to music from Hamilton on FaceTime. They got married at Montrose Beach in a small, intimate ceremony. Ben, Peter's brother, officiated, and Samantha's talit was the covering of the chuppah. She was a Blackhawks fan. She liked going to the Cub games. Of course, she liked to talk during the Cub games, too. She loved going to High Lifeline summer camp and oncology camp. Her two trips to Israel were phenomenal experiences for her, reawakening and connecting her to her Jewish roots. She especially enjoyed her birthright experience and made great friends to whom she remained close. She touched so many people in her 28 years. She was a sparkling light for her family and her friends. She taught us what was important in life, to love and to care for others. On Sunday night, as we watched the flames flicker in that old fire pit, Everyone got quiet after sharing their memories. And then Pam leaned over and she said, and that was our girl. There are moments that the words don't reach. There is suffering too terrible to name. You hold your child as tight as you can and push away the unimaginable. Samantha lived life with great enthusiasm and energy. Samantha fought her illness bravely and valiantly. And now finally, she is pain-free and at peace. May her memory always be for a blessing. And let us say, Amen. And now if you are able, please rise for the El Male Rachamim, the memorial prayer. El male rachamim, shochein pam romim, ham se menucha nechona, tacha canfe ha shechina, im kiroshim utorim, kizo ha haraki ha masihirim, et nishmat lea bat fruma, shahal chaleo hulahama. Bal harachamim, yastire habeseter kenafav leholamim, vitzror bitzror hachaim et nishmata. Adonai hu, nachalata v'tanuach b'shalom, amishkavah v'nomar. Amen. Compassionate God, eternal spirit of the universe, grant perfect rest in your sheltering presence to our Samantha, who has entered eternity. O God of mercy, let her find refuge in your eternal presence. Let her soul be bound up in the bond of everlasting life. God is her inheritance. May she rest in peace. And let us say, Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, the interment service will continue at Willow Lawn Memorial Park in Vernon Hills. The family will be returning to the Hereford residence at 3100 Lexington Lane, apartment 307 in Glenview. They'll be together following the interment till 9 p.m. Memorial contributions in her memory to Cure Search for Children's Cancer or Ride Janie Ride, that information is on the service folder. And for those of you who are joining us online, all that information is on our website. For those of you who will be driving in the funeral procession, 
The procession will be forming in our parking lot. Please obtain an orange safety funeral sticker to place on the right-hand side of your windshield. Have your bright lights and hazard lights on at all times. For additional measures of safety, we will be providing many of the cars with a flag that will be affixed to the top portion of your car. We'll have a car in the back of the procession to hopefully keep other cars from entering the procession. And for your own personal safety, I strongly recommend using your horn liberally as you're going through the intersections. And please do not speak or text on your cellular phone while driving to a cemetery. Lastly, ladies and gentlemen, where we're going to the cemetery, there's not a lot of space. Out of respect to the family and compassion to the family, what we're going to do is we're going to bring Samantha's casket to the grave. We're going to lower. Please just give the family as much room as possible, and please don't approach the immediate family till after the burial. This way it gives them time, and you can also come forward to the, to the space. Just keep in mind there's not a lot of room. At this time, I invite everyone to rise and stand in place as we escort the casket of Samantha Nicole Wildeboer along with Cantor Amy Zussman and Sammy's family from the chapel, then you may return to your cars. If you are going to the cemetery, please go directly to your cars. Adonai Rohi Lo Echsar Vino Deshe Yarbitzin Amen 